Hello, thank you for joining us to the New Life series, educational series with Dr. Michael Lyman. Hello, Dr. Lyman. Hello, Nitsa Mazaz. Hello. You're welcome to join us. We're talking with Rav Lightman in the last discussions about Israeli society. We're trying to see how to take our life as Israelis, each of us alone, as part of their family and as part of a greater family, how we can go to the new life. Come, there's a lot of interesting things to learn. I'm sure that today will open a no more horizons, will surprise you with new concepts that you've never heard before, and we'll move forward. I'm bringing as a starting point to this talk my summary for all these discussions we had up till now about the Israeli society. What I learned from all these talks is that you're talking about the fact that the Israeli society is special, that it needs to take itself in its hands and go forward from a place where it's uh, seeing a new horizon with a much better society where the code of the, code of the society is that we're all trying to treat each other like we're in one family. <coughs> we looked at it from all different angles, and today we want to look at that code that we're all part of the same family that we try to relate to one another, love thy neighbor as thyself. We want to connect something very from the roots. The Jewish frequency that goes much further back to us being here in, here in Israel, we have a very rich uh, culture and here and there you manage to open for us this thing that's right at the foundation of this entire culture that developed through thousands of years that actually the, at its essence it's love thy neighbor as thyself and actually this focus is something that gives us an anchor a compass something that, that through which like a ruler we can see what's correct to do what's less correct to do nowadays what will bring us to something good and what will bring us less. What will be correct, accurate, and what will be a waste of time? How can we have new hope, new horizons, light in our lives? And this is where we want to get to today. Nitsa, bring us into the topic, please. <coughs> so when we look at Israeli society, we see very great statistics, very great parts of society see themselves as secular, and according to research surveys, 80% of Jewish Israelis, also the seculars, believe in God, 77% see them see us as the chosen people, 80% believe in the commandments and the Torah. When we look, I can even look at myself personally and many people like me, we often ask ourselves, what's why were we born Jewish? What is Judaism? How is it expressed in our lives? And there's a desire and a search at some point for the root, but for the true essence, that very pure thing that's connected to Judaism. And when you speak about this uh, vision of one family, how would you connect between the Jewish root that we have and that same vision of one family that's truly living according to love thy neighbor as thyself. <coughs> the root of Judaism is love thy neighbor as thyself. It's truly that. This is how we got out of Babylon. <coughs> because Babylon would have, had become capitalist and opportunistic and individualistic. Completely. The society was coming apart. People were distancing themselves from each other. Which, which society? In Babylon. In the days of Abraham. Abraham, our forefather, 3,800 years ago. <coughs> when we got out of there, we left. What was the conflict about, how, why were we different than them? Maybe I'll open it up a bit. <coughs> what do you mean we were different? We're in the days of uh, Abraham's days of ancient Babylon, 3,800 years ago. All of humanity is in one place. 
gas. In Mesopotamia. In Mesopotamia. About three million people approximately are living in the same region. That's it. They're happy there. They have a good society. Everything's good. Suddenly, a new era began where they began to feel that everyone's ego is growing. They don't understand what was happening. But everyone started looking at the other. His grass is greener, he's got this, he's got that. <coughs> and there began to be competition. <coughs> Along with that, it's not just competition between them. They wanted more and more. That's the symbol of the ego, to build a tower to the sky, the Tower of Babylon, yes. They want to get to know God, the forces of nature, that, so that we can manage everyone. We want to manage ourselves, we want to manage nature, <coughs> we want to be in control. That is a jump in the ego that happened in history at that time. They didn't succeed. And then, when they didn't succeed, approximately, approximately around that time, they saw themselves divided into two camps. One camp said, we're developing according to everyone's ego. Whoever wants to can do whatever he sees fit. <coughs> and there was a special group that said no. This whole point of everything is that we have to connect above the ego to find the connection between us, to be one nation, to connect more and more together. The more the ego grows, it doesn't matter, just the opposite. <coughs> the ego is growing so that we can connect above it. And in that way, we will truly build the tower. But the tower will be straight to the sky in the correct manner, that above the uh, animal nature, creature nature, we will put man who is similar to the force of nature and everything around us. <coughs> they divided into two camps. One camp began dispersing throughout the world. The other camp left there and went with Abraham. <coughs> what happened with the special camp that went with Abraham? They had the force of uh, connection. But above all the issues, they can operate the mutual responsibility feeling. We're brothers, we're connected, our entire society is existing mutually, there's no difference between anyone, everything is common. What do you mean above all the problems? They operate the force of connection. If I begin to feel cold towards you, I have to overcome it. We always maintain the connection as one family. <coughs> we begin to see all the forces of nature, uh, the bad forces, um, evil inclination being revealed among us. We begin to see it as an ability, as an opportunity to connect more. Why connect more? If we feel cold, <coughs> you mean cold, like you feel rejected, you feel distant, you feel, so if there's distance, you have to connect him to you, you have to bring the connection closer to you, you have to oppose the distance. To, about, to oppose, and that's how each and every person has to act. We define together that we're a family, no matter what happens from here onward, we're a family. <laughs> we're making a, an agreement between us, like a chupa, any way you want to call it. This is Abraham's approach to life? Yes, perspective. And the other camp said no. If we feel distance, so we just distance ourselves. Yes. 
So where did we get to from that? Why did you tell us? This is the trend of Abraham's group. And the other trend is capitalistic. The other tendency, everyone can do what they want. That's Nimrod's group, or Nimrod's groups. Because the king Nimrod was in charge at that time, governing, and that's how he felt. <laughs> the foundation of Judaism is connecting, and those that go under that name, and they called themselves Jews, Yehudim, because they were attracted to unity. <coughs> and called themselves the sons of Abraham, which is his foundation. Chesed, compassion, love, love thy other as, them, as thyself, and that's it. There's nothing else apart from that at the foundation of Judaism. Now, in order to realize it, this group started to do all kinds of special things. What do we know that Abraham did? He opened his tent to men. Sarah opened a tent for women. They invited people in. They opened the table, invited people. <laughs> what are they talking about? They're just talking about love. They're only talking about love, connecting love, what is man's nature, how to connect with one another, with what forces we can accelerate our development, how we overcome all kinds of unpleasant situations, how we educate our children, what is, happens between a man and woman. <laughs> These are very, very significant things, how a man and woman can be as a family. It's a family, actually. What symbolizes the symbol of the chuppah? Let's make a special ceremony. Also between men and women, and between everyone, between all the men and between all the women together, and between us and the upper force, in circles, from the couple, out to the entire world. What symbolizes the chuppah itself? What's it covering? What's it? It's covering all the crimes. Love will cover what? What crimes? That each of us are egoists. Both of us are egoists. We cover ourselves. That's the chupa. We cover ourselves with the upper force that will surely help us be together despite us being egoistic and wanting to take advantage of one another. That's how we left Babylon. <coughs> like you cover yourself with one blanket. Why? <coughs> to be one means to be similar to the Creator, to be like nature. And all kinds of other traditions, apart from the chupa, the, the open table that's available for anyone going through, there's circumcision. We know that a person can use in order to get closer to others, that's called connecting or zivug, not just with his ego, but with his connected ego, the symbol the symbol of the corrected ego. It's a little bit harder to explain because it's according to a person's internalness. It's based on our desire. There's a part that we can correct and there's a part that we cannot correct. So the external symbol in our body is that we do a circumcision that we're not using all the entire connection, all our desires to connect with another. In each and every desire, there's a part that I'm not capable of correcting, so I don't use it. I minimize it. I cut it. 
off from you. Which, which desire? All desires. In, in mine, in all my desires to connect with you, in each and every desire I have to verify. And then I discover in this verification that I can't use any desire in a complete 100% manner to connect with you. In each and every desire, there's a tiny part that I always think for myself. And that same part I need to cut and throw it into the dirt that will be like dirt. I don't want to use that desire. The thought for myself, like you define the thought for myself, if I understand, you're talking about for my own good. <coughs> Uh, love uh, another as thyself is, first of all, to love others more than yourself. <laughs> and here I can't use this part to love others more than myself. <laughs> but I still, first of all, think about myself. So that same part I don't want to use. That's called cutting it off from use. Yes, and I look at it like garbage. I throw it into the dirt. It's a symbol of evil. <laughs> because the connection between one another symbolizes this coupling in life and between the bodies in our life here. The wife is the symbol of the deficiency. Nukva is nekev. The husband is the symbol of giving. The male is bestowing. Therefore, if I bestow, I have to be careful that I'll be able to influence for the good of others and not for my sake. That's why males have to go through a circumcision. By the way, this is interesting, but how is this connected to the coldness you spoke about before? You spoke about two vectors, the system. Doesn't matter, a man or a woman. Yes, but for a second, we're getting rid of the picture of a man and woman, and we're talking about two people. I understood at the beginning you said between two people, there can be two kinds of relations, either rejection and coldness, or the opposite. Opposite, a, a tendency to getting closer, a tendency to getting further apart. And now when you just spoke, uh, love thy neighbor as thyself, there has to be something from my interests. If I relate to the other by getting close to them, by getting closer to others, inside my desire to bestow to him, to get closer. We're not talking about instantly, but rather afterward, when we truly get into relations where, I, where I'm receiving for the sake of bestowing, where I'm really, with all my power, I want to bestow good to others. Not from the starting point, I'm not in that relation, but with the others. There, if I with all my strength want to bestow with everything I have to connect to the others for the sake of others, I need to verify and see where our law is there. What's our law? It's a part of my will to receive. It's the hardest part. It's the hardest part. <laughs> It's also called Afra, like from dirt. It's so huge, this desire, that I'm not capable of identifying it with others. There, there I just want for myself. That's why I don't use it. A symbol of not using this desire is called circumcision that if I go to bestow to others, I'm bestowing with all the other desires, with all the other parts of the desires, apart from our la that's in each and every one. For a moment, let's summarize this principle. There's others, but there's a certain principle that it says like this. If we want to distance, it's easy. Everyone goes to their direction. It's simple. If we decide that we want to get closer, it's not enough that we decided. If we, want to, we know that when we try to get closer, it doesn't always succeed. Even if we make a decision to connect, 
Even if we make decision to unite, we reach and there's something that throws us out. We have like an inner opposition to connecting, right? So we do some attempt and we distance ourselves. I think everyone can feel it on a daily basis. Even when you say, okay, let's leave everything aside and let's connect. You come to connect and suddenly you feel some force that's not really allowing you to connect. Let's not get into it. The things are much more internal. There's a lot more more in-depth psychology than we're talking about here. I don't think we should get into it because it's very difficult for people to grasp. So let me get back to our first question. I really like Tnitsa's question. What's the connection between this new horizon that you're describing for the Israeli society that can reformat Israeli society and take us to a direction where we're all like one family to the ancient Jewish root? That was the question. That's the question we started the discussion with. So maybe let's summarize this. People that left uh, Babylon after Abraham began to carry out all these traditions as a reflection of their internalness for the external life. And they had many, apparently, traditions, external traditions that they would carry out within themselves in an internal manner, in their desires, meaning in the connection between them. <laughs> Uh, receiving guests, love others as thyself, like uh, circumcision and many other things, to the extent that they began to carry out love thy neighbor as thyself, they started to discover all different types of love thy neighbor as thyself, the spiritual, spiritually, and then they felt that in our world, they felt a reflection of what they have here as symbols. Let's say they suddenly discovered that on the way to correcting the relations between them, there's a period that they go through that's called Sukkot, tabernacles, that they have to be under schach, uh, under or chasadim, the light of chasadim, that corrects them. In one of the eras, they began to feel that they have to be freezing their desire like in the desert, and they truly were in the desert, historically speaking. They went through the desert. Our forefathers, from the moment they left Babylon with Abraham and until they reached the destruction of the Second Temple, that entire period that they went through, they actually went through in an internal manner and also in an external manner by matching in accordance with the two worlds because they carried out the method of correction on a person's uh, egoistic nature. And they advanced with this correction until this correction stopped in the at the destruction of the Second Temple. So tefillin, talit, all those traditions, sacrifices, prayers, prayers they didn't have in those days like they have today. Everyone used to pray based on their individual situation. Sukkot, Passover, the more they went through, they accepted these things just as they went through it internally in the relations between them, the relations between them and the upper force, they also did it in, the, in this world, because for them it was one world. One world. If I live in a state where relating well to others is called respecting them by giving them food in spirituality, then I 
In this world, give them food. I don't slap him with my hand. In this world and in spirituality, send him uh, kisses. I'm in one world. For me, the this corporal world and the spiritual world is one world. I don't feel changes. What does it mean to respect someone in internalness with food? to cause them to be filled inside. I can cause, I can feed the, I can feed the masses, I can give them uh, internal filling, yes, that's called uh, receiving guests. So if I understand, it's very deep what you're talking about, I'll tell you what I understood so far. You're saying there's a man and the public. Between them, there's a system. There can be all kinds of adventures and different types that are It's basically divided to two, that we're distancing and we're getting closer to each other. Inside, there's all kinds of different situations. When people feel closeness between their hearts, they're also expressing it in materially. So let's say now you gave the example that when you're receiving guests or you're respecting someone for something, for me, receiving guests at an internal manner, that's what I'm asking. It's called that all those desires that were previously distancing us from one another, that same coldness that I used to disregard her, that I wouldn't pay attention, suddenly I see that I can bring these desires closer and I can use them in order to bestow, to do good. That's called receiving guests. His desires are guests. I'm also a bit confused. What's a guest? A desire that's not mine? My desire toward you, let's say, that previously was far from the correct use, egoistic, and now I'm taking my desire and through it, by correcting it, I'm relating well to others. Let's say to you, <coughs> that's called receiving guests. I'm not putting anything inside myself, external. The entire world are my desires. But if I correct my desires in this manner, it's called receiving guests. That's how I bring them closer and they become mine. Let's go to a more traditional format. All my desires toward the entire world or toward certain people that I can correct from taking advantage of them to the opposite. Let's say, let's call it receiving guests. What I want to say is in our world, the reflection of this is that I am receiving guests at my house. And that's, uh, there's truly a complete order how to do that, not just like we do today, but once upon a time, it was like that and it's still left over from the ancient cultures. That's really a whole ceremony, how to bring the guest, how to bring him in, sit him down, how, if he's com comfortable, what smells, what odors, what music, how I respect him. There's total ceremonies around that. It all comes from these corrections. <coughs> so in other words, today I'm trying to look at, today it's a very strong tradition, but it's just an external perspective. Today we don't understand, we're not going through these internal corrections, so we don't have against that uh, reflection on the outside, we don't understand this. It's like a little kid, you can say to him, do this, he'll do it, but he won't know why we're saying it. He he doesn't have the internalness of things. He's not scared of not uh, carrying out like this or like that. So against all the corrections, the foundation of all the corrections of my ego, 
I have to firstly check if I'm using it for the sake of others, which part of it I can use for the sake of others and use that part, which part I can use for the sake of others and not use it, I'm freezing it. Each and every desire from the 613 desires, each of us have. That's the first point, to check my ego. What does it mean, this ego? My desire to re enjoy on account of others. On account of others. Again, my desire, ego, is what, how I want to take advantage of others. What do I do with this inclination? It's natural, isn't it? It's natural. Each person, if he checks himself, if he wants to get closer to others, if he wants to get closer to others, then he begins to see how the opposite, the op how his nature directs him to take advantage of his fellow man. Whoever does not attempt to get closer to his fellow man, to loving his fellow man, he doesn't feel that he has an ego. Look, look around, you ask, you see before the elections, everyone is so white silk, Everyone is white fur, everyone has this pleasant, beautiful, everyone's so, they're like angels. They're not lying. We think they're lying and they're not lying, or everyone's lying. No one's lying. Why? Because we're not feeling their ego. They never worked for the sake of their fellow man, for love of their fellow man. The ego is just what's against the connection, the connection of the hearts to one heart. Therefore, if you ask me, someone in the world who feels evil, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. Ego is what's against the connection of all the hearts to one heart. That's what's awakening in a man under the condition that he really wants to love his fellow man. So if I'm applying it to this uh, vision you have of Israeli society, we have to define a vision where we're all like one family. We need to begin working in loving our fellow man as one family, we'll begin feeling this inner opposition in each of us, and that is precisely the ego that we're talking about, that that's what we need to connect, correct. Everything else is just uh, creature stuff. We're all creatures. There's nothing that we need to correct. We just want to eat more, to rest more, take advantage of others. It has nothing to do with what we have to correct, not that. It's not at all that. So I'm making a picture like this. We have a ship, and it's going in a certain path. Today our ship, Israeli society, is going to some unclear destination, but it's something bad. We're saying, let's direct the ship to a good place. The new place is this promised uh, beach where we'll all feel like one family. Let's say that we get it, this vision you're presenting, and we truly want to adopt it. Now we turn the ship around toward this direction. First of all, we started like in every project, we define the goal. Now, if we truly because you want to go like Abraham, in the direction of Abraham, the direction that he commanded, that he directed us toward. Not Nimrod's direction, not humanity's direction, but rather to a specific direction called Abraham. Is that correct or not? Yes, so I'm translating you. We want to connect to the roots. Okay, you took the words out of my mouth, so actually the definition of this goal as the, 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 the goal of the Israeli society, in that we've first of all focused on perception of life of Abraham, our forefather, and that's how we got to our most 
Dark red are roots of the Jewish people. So there's no such thing that is actually more represents us more than that. If that's the root, if that's Abraham, our forefather, that's us, nothing more, nothing less. And that's where we have to go to. Now you're saying, if we go for it, we have lots of adventures waiting for us here. What's waiting for you on the way? You can open Chumash and see a Bible. That's exactly what's awaiting you. Us here today, yes. What's awaiting us? I'm interested to hear. What's awaiting us? If we truly take, if the public really feels it and says, we want this, not something rubbish, we want to build her a society, love thy neighbor as thyself, it won't just be a sticker on the car, it'll go straight into my heart and it's very fragile and the, because it's, uh, the ego is always increasing and all those things. We want that. We define it, we understand it. There's a first phase of grasping this vision that you're presenting and to the extent of how deep it is, it's like little words. It's all of humanity from the ancient times till today. It's the same thing. Either you're going according to nature or, the, or you're going above nature. There's nothing else. What nature? The egoistic nature of man. To distance ourselves, take advantage of people, or to get close and take advantage of ourselves. There's two forces in nature, force of reception and force of bestowal. That's all there is. What's the force of reception and force of bestowal? Force of reception that I want to take advantage as much as possible of everything around me and I'm enjoying taking advantage of my fellow man even though I don't need anything from him. I humiliate him and this gives me pleasure. And the force of bestowal is the opposite that I become the servant of, uh, of my fellow men. So being Jewish is going according to the method of Abraham that you're explaining and defining as a new vision and a new old vision. Yes, there's nothing else. And that's called actually being Jewish. Then all the Torah is before us. When we go through it, according to the Bible, exactly as it is written, each and every person and all of us together. It's a simple plan. It's a plan of man, of all of the reality. When you say we'll go through, we'll go through in our internalness, in the relations between us. What happens? That same group that left Babylon, when you say in our internalist, you mean the relations between us, you're talking about relations between people as in their internal work. Not just their internal work, not with their hands and legs. If I understand, sometimes it's difficult to understand you, but if I understand you're differentiating between, in life, there's two levels, an inner level and a more external level. The inner level, let's say between us, why, why are you going so far? The three of us. We're now in Babylon. Around us is Babylon. Everyone wants to take advantage of others today? Totally. We agree between us that we're leaving Babylon. We're going to the land of Canaan. What's it called, having the land of Canaan? Between us, there we can be concerned and carry out love, love thy neighbor as thyself. Everyone looks after his fellow man. Your desire is prior to my desire. For you, my desire is prior to your desire. And the same goes for her. The fact that we define these relations between us is called disconnecting from Babylon. So I don't go to the supermarket, I don't go to work. Everything I do just inside, we define that in our little framework, this is how we behave. It's like a special spiritual kibbutz. It's spiritual, it's, in, it's according to our inner spirit. That's what we want to reach. And on the way, all kinds of um, inner events take place, the relations, the excitement between us. We can open a Bible, and suddenly we see that's how they did it. 
We suddenly understand Abraham was in Beersheba, he went down to Egypt, he came back to Beersheba. We feel what Beersheba and Mitzrayim and Egypt, what those things are inside. It's not geography. It's not our, our inner geography, how I go up and down in relation to him, her, and everyone to me. Suddenly I begin to see that we're actually talking about our inner geography, about my relations with my fellow man. That same love thy neighbor as thyself, how I carry it out in each and every moment, it's explained in that same book. But with the map, as it's as if it's geography, but it's your inner geography, which desires these are, which desires those are, which I use. The Torah becomes teaching to a state, to a book where, <coughs> where according to this book, I advance toward what? Toward love thy neighbor as thyself in a complete manner. <coughs> it tells me how I have to feel myself in each and every stage, moment after moment, if I'm attracted to love thy neighbor as thyself. Suddenly, egoistic, new egoistic desires awaken in me. That's called falling to Egypt. Suddenly, I have Pharaoh that wants to grab uh, Sarah that as well. My ego wants to grab a desire that I already corrected, take advantage of it. So myself in relation to the, my fellow man, I see how much my ego wants my relations with the fellow man that were good in the past, that I corrected them, my ego wants to take advantage of them now. Let's say I had good relations with you in the past, friendly relations, suddenly my new egoistic desire comes and I use it to say, Oren, give me a thousand dollars. And of course you do it gladly because we love each other. Each person wants to give everything to the other. And actually, I'm using my ego. I'm taking advantage of you, the relations between us, the previous relations between us, and take the money from you and don't give it back to you or anything. So it's like a sneakiness. It's called being under Pharaoh, under the governance of Pharaoh, that Pharaoh takes Sarah and wants to enjoy her. And more and more. That's how we feel. So you're saying it's all between people. Of course, it's all in implementing love others as thyself between people. Of course, between people, not between animals. Of course, it also reflects to the other levels, vegetative and the animal kingdom, and also toward the Creator. Now, in the example that you gave, you gave a really great example. What does it explain? Something that you said before. You gave an example that someone, that there's an act and there's the intention in the heart. There's an act that you come to ask me for a loan. We have good relations between us. What's good relations? I love, I, that I love you. I love you as well. But suddenly, my ego jumped up. And the relations between us is called Sarah, the corrected will to receive. And then we truly live one soul to another. And then this ego jumps in me and I take advantage of the previous situation for the sake of this ego. That's called Pharaoh jumping in me. The ego wants to take advantage of Sarah for his own good. Can we leave Sarah out of this a second? It's confusing me. I can't. I can't follow this. Okay. There we have uh, love between us. We have love thy neighbor as thyself between you. And you say to me, Oren, I need a, a loan. Maybe not even a loan. It doesn't matter. Of course, I'll give you everything. Right now, I need it. You don't even ask it. You have a possibility to, you have an opportunity to give me. You're so happy to give it to me, just like to my child. You don't even ask when you're going to give it back. Nothing. 
you just you have an opportunity to give and I discover a deficiency and for you it's the greatest happiness you remind me my, how my father gives us uh, money exactly in that manner that's the first stage and then there's a uh, development that what you said suddenly, that after I give it to you, suddenly this love, this great love that we have between us, it suddenly dissipates a little bit and some new force arises that's egoistic, that I want to take advantage of everyone. That's Pharaoh. That's the symbol of the ego. So what I understand from this example, why does Pharaoh, what does Pharaoh want with the Jews? Why does he want to use them? Because from the start, before they came to Egypt, they had between them good relations. They had the force of bestowal. If I use the force of bestowal for myself, I can take advantage of everyone. I have such pleasure. I can do so much good. I can say now to everyone, let's say in the world, there's a few million people that are fans of mine. I can say to everyone, people, I'm in trouble. Like Rabash says, I want to buy my wife a diamond that costs a million dollars. Help me. So I'm using their good relation, the way, their good relation to me that I always taught them how to bestow, and now I'm using what I taught them, and I'm saying, yeah, each of you give me a few dollars, so I'll have a million dollars to buy my wife a diamond. It's a type of uh, bribery. It's taking advantage. It's taking advantage of the Torah of the holiness. It's taking advantage of the of the love of your fellow man. That's the Egyptians, what they did to, toward the Jews, that they want to continue. They want to continue love thy neighbor as thyself, but they can't because everything they, they did, Pharaoh would suck it out. So when you say Egyptians, you're talking about strengths that are arising in us in Israel. What do you think? We have to go to Egypt to see them, to be in Egypt? Here now, between us in the 21st century, we're going through the entire Torah between us without leaving this room. My impression until now from this discussion, we started with that the new vision for the Israeli society is to build here a society. That's what we want, yes. We started from a vision, love, love thy neighbors, thyself, that's the new social code for Israel in 2013 and onward. And all of a sudden inside it, something's opened up. These spaces where and accuracies of the purity but internally between people. You cut each, every person, you open them up, and now it's important to see the relations between people, not just the relations, how clean it is, how suddenly it gets dirty again. Of course, at each and every moment it's renewed, the will to receive increases and opens itself, its ego opens more and more. To receive what? The pleasure, pleasure from our fellow men on account of our fellow men. Let's look for a moment at Judaism. I'm trying to think for a moment. All of Judaism is a reflection of this inner process that we're going through in carrying out love thy neighbor as thyself, which is the law. Why is it the law? It's called that at each and every moment, what 
doesn't happen, no matter what happens between us and each and every person, we carry out this law. So the Torah explains to us how we, above each and every ego, we're always carrying out this law. Ups and downs according to our ego, but we're always above our desires and carrying out a connection with everyone this pure bestowal and then they explain to you that from the beginning from Breshit to the last word in the Torah Yisrael this whole story is how you carry out the law love thy neighbor as thyself that's it Judaism is actually an approach to connection and that's it that's the whole issue so the whole Torah explains what happens after we decide to connect otherwise there's no Torah so in other words it goes into only when we see this one desire in the Torah let's connect that's why Abraham I didn't get it. It started with Abraham, Judaism. I didn't get it. He's the one that said, love thy neighbor as thyself. With that, he began the whole development, this group development as a people. Toward, toward love thy neighbor as thyself, toward bestowal, toward the Creator. What was before him? Prior to that, there were only single people from Adam to only individuals would deal with it. There was no Torah. Torah is the connection between people. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Until then, it was just in a direct manner toward the Creator, from man to Abraham. But it doesn't matter for today. Those previous steps are, they don't exist. They don't exist in us. We have a few more minutes, and I'd really like to get off track for a second. Even though everything is nice and pleasant and correct, love thy neighbor as thyself, it's important in everything. Still, still, just not that, but anything but that. Let's deal with something else. The question is, at the beginning of the discussion, we had three words, love thy neighbor as thyself. And what do we have now? Now we also have three words. They just got a little bit more, they're inflated a bit more. We got like a demand to be more and more accurate, to purify more and more the heart that will be directed like a vector as truly loving your fellow man and not. But what did you think that love thy neighbors their self? You yourself say, we made stickers for our cars and we need to take from the stickers to the heart. You said it, not me. That's what happened to us. We slightly touched upon this. And now, if we really adopt this story here in Israel, not as if we're not in politics. Let's say we truly do it. We click on a button, and from this moment onward, everyone is in love of brothers. That's the end, I think. I think first thing, what I'd want is, first of all, the first click that everyone will want to connect. That's the point we're talking from, that everyone will want to. So we have to do what Abraham did. He started to promote this knowledge. So you're his representative. So I'm asking you, like Abraham's uh, tent, they talked. Every, all my students, that's why I teach them. Hang on, hang on, hang on with your students. They're, they're promoting this to the whole world. Let's not get away from it. Uh, wait, you're Abraham's representative, I want to ask you. If we truly, if we truly want to realize this uh, knowledge with all this depth that we just spoke of, 
איך... Give us a taste of what kind of life it will bring us to. What will it give us? I respect the Torah and love thy neighbor as thyself. Respecting, I don't know what it means, respect. Put it in the cupboard, close it up. In a vault, that's what it's called. Realizing love thy neighbor as thyself is called all my desires, all my thoughts are always not in me, but in my fellow man. What does that mean? This is how I replace my perception of reality. I suddenly begin to spill myself outside of myself. It's me, and I'm as if not in myself, but outside myself, in everyone. I'm spreading myself out. I'm spilling myself on everyone, on all of humanity, on all of nature, on everyone. That's where my heart and mind are. The I in me is no longer exists. It only exists so that I can do this act. That's it. And Instead of me, there's a point left that did this act. I came out of myself altogether. That's it. Can I ask? If when we're speaking of a new society, you're talking about a society where every person will go through this process in connection to others, yes. So that's what I'm asking about. I don't really grasp it, but let's say it happens, this X that you're saying. If it happens, what, what kind of society will we have? It's called a society that lives according to our mutual guarantee. A society that lives as one man and with one heart. What does it give us? Emotionally, what does it give a person? He feels everyone as one. He feels all of reality as one. He feels as if he's in a different reality. Not like he felt before that he and the reality but there's only one reality, and then he feels it as the creator, as the upper force, that he is in it. He feels himself there in eternity, perfection, in a different world, the next world. That's what we need to reach. I didn't really get it. It's an emotional thing. We can't really... You have to understand it abstractly. In words, that's all I can say. Whether you want it or not, nature will force us to reach this. The God that, according to Gematria, is nature, will force us to reach love of our fellow man, will reach it. Either we'll go according to Abraham's Torah, that us Jews have to go back to it, and also explain it and supply it to the entire nations of the world and provide an example. We have to be a place a source, the land of Israel, that they will connect with us and come to us and be connected and feel that the light comes from here, from Jerusalem. It has to be like this. Judaism has to give truly light to the entire world. This true Judaism that has internalness. And all the traditions, we'll talk about them, to what extent they have to be, but they have to be only toward the Jews, only toward those that are in it. Whoever isn't, isn't. That's the external thing. We have one more minute. I have one more question to conclude. What's the difference between Israeli society that doesn't have love thy neighbor as thyself and a society in another X amount of time that is living according to that? In feeling, I don't know. What does that mean in feeling? How is life felt? In my eyes, it's not Israeli society. A person who doesn't yearn to love thy neighbor as thyself is not called Jewish, is not called Israeli. 
He's, um, according to this principle, we differentiate ourselves from all the Babylonians, from all the nations of the world. If not, then you're just like them. Inside you have some point where it was, it was in it at one point that had to awaken, but at the end of the day you're exactly like them. You're not even called an Israeli in exile, because an Israeli in exile is someone who feels that he's in exile, that wants to carry out love thy neighbors thyself, but can't. Yeah, the nations of the world are holding him and not allowing him to be Israel. I have to ask, why does he want to carry out love thy neighbors thyself? That's what I don't understand. Is this, this is real. Why? Because he began to understand that this is a special thing. This is a high thing above this uh, animalness in our world. To yearn to be a man is similar to the Creator, to know why he lives, what's the point of life. To not remain in this uh, creature form. Okay, our time is up. You're leaving us uh, curious for the continuation. We, with great compassion, we were shown that we are not eternal, that we die. If it wasn't so difficult to get to this. <laughs> okay, let's continue onward. Thank you, Rav Lyman. Thank you, Nitzamazos. Thank you to you as well. Until next time, all the best.